Hey guys, John from FlyAteMikeAlpha.com, and today we're going to be talking about how to determine the required takeoff distance, the required length of runway to safely take off, and look at a few different charts based on our weight, density, altitude, things like that to determine how long does the runway actually have to be for us to get the airplane off the ground and into the air safely. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is simply look at one of these charts here and as we're looking at this takeoff distance chart with a maximum weight 2300 pounds so we're at gross weight it's specified short field so that specifies certain conditions that we have to take care of in this case it's flaps up full throttle prior to brake release and on a paved level dry runway with zero wind so if you put your flaps differently, if you don't apply brakes before throttling up and let the engine spool up to full power and everything, then these figures wouldn't exactly be accurate for you to use. So we're going to go ahead and just look at this chart where it specifies for us the takeoff speed um, at liftoff and at 50 feet, what speeds we want to be at. So we want to be at 52 knots indicated at liftoff. And we're going to say that our pressure altitude outside today is about 2,000 feet. So we'll come over here to 2,000. And it's also, it's pretty hot out. It's actually, it's about 40 degrees Celsius. So let's look and see how long of a ground roll that's going to take. And we work our way over here to determine that ground roll on that really hot 105 degree day, 40 degrees Celsius, is going to be 1,155 feet. And then to clear a 50 foot obstacle, we're going to need a total of about 2,055 feet. So that's just to clear it too. That's not to clear it by 50 or 100 feet. That's just to not hit it. So you're going to want a little more room than just that. So at first glance, you know, maybe a 3,000 foot long runway is more than enough for us. Maybe that's more than adequate. But let's look at this another way. All right. So let's also take into account that this chart was made when the airplane was brand new, the engine was brand new, and they had a really good test pilot in there that knew exactly what to do to get the best performance numbers possible because they're not here to write up, you know, conservative numbers. They're here to write up overly optimistic numbers because they're trying to sell airplanes. So they're going to put the best numbers they can in there without being, you know, overly optimistic. But so we just want to add a little bit of fudge factor on there and hopefully we might have some headwind that we can take into account and it looks like for operation with um, tailwinds up to 10 knots we could increase the distance by 10 percent for each two knots of tailwind uh, we definitely want to avoid taking off of the tailwind then because just two knots of tailwind means these distances go up by 10 percent or it'll also specify for us for headwind how much we can decrease the distance we can see here that we can decrease the distances by 10% for each nine knots of headwind. So we can see we need a lot more headwind to decrease just 10% than if we were increasing with a tailwind. So headwinds are great, tailwinds really, really bad. Uh, but let's say we had nine knots of headwind. Well, then we could decrease these numbers by 10%. So that would bring us to, looks like instead of 1155, we could take uh, 115 feet or so off of there. Now, like we said, this isn't the total whole story here. 1155 to get off the ground and 2055 isn't guaranteed to clear that obstacle because these were numbers when the airplane was brand new. Also, what else do you want to take into account? You know, when we said a 3000 foot runway should work for us, let's really look at that. So we're going to next look at our chart for landing. So what would we need if we're going to land the airplane and why we want to look at that is well, let's say we accelerate to 52 knots to go ahead and rotate, and then the airplane starts shaking real bad. The engine makes a bad noise. Something goes wrong. And now we have to stop the airplane, reduce power, get on the brakes, and stop on the remaining runway because we certainly don't want to go fly at this point if we have something that seems abnormal with the aircraft. So, coming over to our landing distance chart at 2,300 pounds, uh, power off, maximum braking, paved level dry runway, and 40 degrees of flaps, so very optimistic, and speed at 50 feet, it's shown us 60 knots. It's gonna be assuming that you're touching down at or near stall speed. So let's go ahead and go back to our regular conditions, 2,000 feet there, pressure altitude, 40 degrees Celsius. It's gonna take us 610 feet from the time the wheels touch the ground to roll out and get stopped. And if we were clearing a 50 foot obstacle, 1405. So what I like to do here, um, to give myself a little margin of error, I would like to take my 
distance required to clear a 50 foot obstacle, add that to my distance to clear a 50 foot obstacle upon landing, and then I need a runway at least 50% longer than that. And that gives me plenty of room. So if the airplane did accelerate to take off speed, have a problem, maybe get it airborne a little bit, I would be able to reduce power, get it back on the ground and get it stopped before hitting the fence at the end of the runway. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching and thank you so much for sharing us on Facebook, Twitter and all the other social media sites. If you have any questions about the video at all, just leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Be sure to give us a thumbs up on our video and you can subscribe to us to keep up with all our latest episodes right over here on the right. Also, check out some of these other helpful videos below. And remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see you all next time.